Welcome back to another edition of Chat Call. Today we're covering the world of LTL. Don't forget to subscribe to Chat Call the newsletter on FreightWaves.com if you haven't already. Before we dive into our guest interview, there is some news in the world that you should check out. Monterey, Mexico is the home of Tesla's newest manufacturing plant. After Tesla's move to Austin two years ago, many of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 suppliers either moved to Mexico to start new factory operations or greatly increased the size and scope of current operations. Now that the manufacturing plant is there, volumes in cross-border freight are going to skyrocket. Northern states of Mexico are poised to be the home of automotive manufacturing. Martha Delgado Peralta, Mexico's Undersecretary of Foreign Affairs, said we would be encouraged an ecosystem of electric vehicles and raising our levels of exports to the United States by 3.5% annually, equivalent to a sum of $15 billion, representing a 10% increase in auto-related exports. This move could actually increase the amount of trade between the U.S. and Mexico to over $15 billion, uh, especially if other automakers likely follow at, into the Monterey region. This week's sonar chart of the show is the outbound tender rejection index based on length of haul. Nothing massive changed in the way of the most preferred lengths being local hauls under 250 miles. Almost every carrier is accepting these lengths. Something that is a little more interesting is that the tried and true long hauls over 800 miles are becoming less favorable. Historically, long hauls are accepted more regularly than others, but has slightly fallen out of favor in exchange for the mid-length hauls. Today we are joined by Curtis Garrett, founder at Understand LTL. Welcome to the show, Curtis. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Happy to be here. I am very excited about this one um, because, fun fact, I actually mistook you for someone else when we were getting on the plane to go to F3, and um, I quickly found out that it was not who I thought it was, and it was, in fact, you. And then we had a nice little conversation that led to the show today, and I'm pretty excited to actually get a chance to sit down and talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is LTO. So before we dive too far in, let's get a little background on you and how you started to understand LTL. Yeah, so I think I was actually wearing one of the hats on the wall back there, the Freight Vana hat, um, which is one of the first that I had and kind of kick started my collection. So thanks to those guys. Um, yeah, so I, I've just really spent my whole career for the most part uh, post college in LTL. Started at Old Dominion, spent eight years there, worked in a bunch of different areas, operations, WNR, pricing, yield. Um, and then for the last seven, eight years have been kind of in the third party world, doing consulting, working for a few different brokerages. Um, and just over the years, I, I guess I might be a bit of a lazy hacker in a way where if I just see a problem that I don't, you know, it's monotonous or I'm doing the same things over and over again, or it's just something I don't agree with. I just try to find a solution to make my life easier. And then maybe it can, you know, help other people's lives and day to day as well. So I've done a few little projects over the years. One of my first was the the rules tariff website that I put up, uh, which is still just a consolidation of all the, the different carrier links, because um, I didn't want to go to the, each website and, and search for it over and over again. Um, and then I started started thinking, um, we do we do training and education really poorly in LTL, and it's it's always you know down in the weeds and and getting granular right out of the gate, talking about a million different variables. So I just decided maybe I got enough questions about how things work that I you know I decided to put it down and and create create a, an asset, a digital asset around it to be able to to give that out. But I want I really want to help people think about the industry, kind of help them create the mental models and frameworks in their head to distill and boil down these everyday examples and problems and issues that they get thrown into um, and kind of work through that and, and simplify. So one of my one of my favorite examples, you know, when talking about all the different things that, that drive LTL carrier cost is most of them roll up to either space, time or risk. And space can be, you know, space on the trailer, the cross dock, um, that the big one there is line haul space. That's the biggest part of a carrier's cost. And then time obviously can be at origin, destination, admin, cross dock again. Um, and risk can be, you know, anything from how the freight is tendered, packaged, uh, what type of commodity it is to credit and financial risk. Um, so 
that's kind of I, I I take it as a challenge, I guess, to take these seemingly complicated uh, parts of LTL, which they're really not. It's just a combination of a lot of things and boil it down to, you know, a simple framework or some sort of visual to to just help people kind of swallow it and make more sense of it in their mind. So that's that's how I got to where I am. <laughs> um, your comment about, you know, just getting so granular with LTL so quickly, that could not be more true because as I've tried to explain, you know, LTL to people, you're like, okay, well, there's not really a good way for me to explain. Like there's like that 30 second overview of like, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like airplanes where, you know, you get to where you need to be. You might need to have a layover in another city, but eventually you get to your final destination. That's like a very broad overview. But if you're trying to under like explain it to someone like any more in depth than that, you go from like, yeah, things just get there to like, okay, so this specific product is this code and this classification and it's this discount. And everybody's like, what are all these words that you're saying? And you're like, just keep going. It'll make sense eventually. Yeah, it's yeah, you're right. Air, airline is kind of the the go to comparison. And yeah, you know, when you're just talking about like a hub and spoke line hole network, it kind of overlaps. But then I actually did a post online about this one time, just kind of comparing, you know, if you truly want to want to compare um, and correlate airlines with the LTL business, you have to go to the customer's home, pick them up, you know, you don't know how much luggage they're bringing, like all these step by step um you know they ask for a, a third seat on the plane basically there's just it's so far beyond that so yeah there's a lot of like buts and and you know this is kind of lto is kind of like this but it it isn't <laughs> so yeah it's the it's the land of i'm just going to create an analogy that um, that makes it you know, okay for now. And then just don't ask any more questions because you're going to get way too far down the rabbit hole too quickly. And I feel like everybody in LTL has just got an analogy for an accessorial or how to explain LTL to someone that has no idea. It's a good time. <laughs> um, but as analogies aside, you said that you've kind of created this training thing, which honestly the entire LTL industry needs as someone who just learned by trial and also asking carriers, well, why did you do it this way versus that way? And getting some hostile responses, not going to lie. Sometimes people don't like it when you question them. Um, but why should people care more about L care more about LTL than they do? Yeah. I mean, I may be a little biased, but it's, I think it's going to keep becoming um, so much more of a vital part of ground transportation in the U S I mean, You've got, I like to kind of compare it to parcel and truckload where it's got the capabilities and expectations um, and strength of a truckload mode where you can load up an LTL carrier with tens of thousands of pounds if need be. You know, they have 53 foot full, fully commercial uh, semi class A trucks. But then at the same time, like I literally had a, a home delivery this morning to my house by an LTL carrier with a straight truck and a lift gate. And it was one crate on a pallet jack. So they kind of have the nimbleness and flexibility of a parcel carrier as well. So it's, it's a good and bad world to be in there. You know, there's high expectations because they're really expected to mirror both of those types of providers in those different modes. But then it also means if, you know, if they do it well, and when I say they, I guess, I mean the specific, you know, LTL carriers, they really have a lot of options and they never are quite at the mercy of the market because if things slow down in, you know, the perfect type of freight they want, they can always open a damper over here, get more truckload spillover. Same thing from like the e-com and small pack world. So that's, you know, that's in a nutshell why people should care more about it. Um, but I also sympathize with people where it's kind of, it's been hard to care about. It's kind of, threatening and it bites you and and it is typically associated with some pain <laughs> so that's what we need to uh to soften is just the the user experience i guess you could say um that's what i'm trying to be for ltl is just a user experience uh you know improver 
I like it. I think that that is, I mean, you bring up a great point with the rise of e-commerce and, you know, I can't even tell you how picky LTL carriers have gotten over the last few years from, oh, I'm not going to do this type of freight. I'm going to do this type of freight. And, um, like everyone has gotten so niched and that's great. And, you know, if I was an LTL, LTL carrier, I would be doing the same thing. Um, but I, feel like everyone's kind of taken a step back and been like, okay, this is a freight we really excel at. And this is kind of what we want to stick with. Um, because I went from when I was a pricing analyst, I went from having like maybe 20 carriers respond to a bid to maybe only like five to 10. And just because in the same response from everyone was like, it's just not the type of freight that we're looking for. And then I started panicking. I was like, what are the type of freight you're looking for? Cause how am I going to bring it to you? Yeah. It's when the nightmares kick in when you're out looking for freight in your dreams for carriers. Um, yeah, I mean, that, I think that just lends itself to we need more information, more transparency at, at an LTL market level. Um, looking back to decades ago, you know, pre-deregulation where really it was just every carrier was kind of a commodity. They could all do essentially the same thing. There weren't a lot of technology advancements back then for competitive advantages and and they just got, you know, the states and lanes they operated in and just did their thing. But obviously I think I think there's still sometimes viewed in that manner now. And and especially when you're dealing with procurement folks at say the shippers or even 3PLs that may not be totally in the know on, you know, which carriers are good at this but not that, which verticals or industries and markets they they tend to, you know, fish in versus others. It's it, they're not all equal in the same by any means. Um, and it's kind of, it's kind of confusing because it is a small, there's only, you know, 30 to 40 legitimate LTL carriers of any size. So it, it's, I just say LTL is weird. You know, it's extremely weird. That That's why I like it. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that are pretty counterintuitive. Pretty much everyone I've ever talked to about LTL just says ends with saying, I don't know, man, LTL is just weird. It just is. Um, and at least the industry is kind of consistent, but you touched on some of the technology aspects. And so, um, you know, truckloads had their time in the sun parcels. You know, I know exactly where my shipment is. I can know if it's 10 stops away. Um, but LTL, I feel like is kind of going from the stone ages to, you know, tech technology pretty quickly. Um, we've got, you know, API calls, dynamic pricing, et cetera, et cetera. What are some of the quick wins that you see happening from either the shipper side or the LTL carrier side um, in regards to like modernization and process improvement? Yeah, I, there's a lot happening right now, as you mentioned. It's I kind of equate it to, you know, if you look at a service map of a national carrier and over the years you see just different different markets and regions being filled in with terminals. You know, there's different categories and, and niche areas where new companies and, and companies that have a better mousetrap with tech or process are popping up. Um, companies focusing on, you know, just the location and how that relates to LTL carriers and uh, and customers, companies focused on just paying lumpers. There's, It's really cool to see. Um, I just started advising for a company called Claim Unity that's just focused on the claims. Um, so I think with the APIs and the technology, we're going to better have this ecosystem of, of subject matter experts by way of different companies. And we can kind of, you know, connect together and, and a lot of us can use the best products out there for this for the specific category. But as far as, you know, hair on fire, what everybody should be doing from a shipper 3PL perspective now, get on API and get get moving towards an API electronic bill of lading. That's no question asked, you know, the biggest ROI and 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 benefit. It'll just it'll it'll you know, boost your carrier relationship from an LTL carrier perspective. It'll improve your pricing because they're you're helping them reduce their costs. They don't have to have all the manual data entry. You're going to help them reduce billing errors, which then makes your life easier because you won't have as much to find in your audit and and to dispute. Um, and then it it just makes the the total process go smoother. Um, it, you're giving them more accurate data sooner in the process in a digital format. And so when you can 
let them plan, you know, their pickup and delivery routes, their line haul schedules. Um, again, let, let that digital information drive the, the billing and everything they do in their systems. It, it's not, I think some folks are, are afraid that it's just like giving in or going over to the dark side, but it, it's really what you need to do to be a good partner. Um, it, again, in a weird industry where right now, you know, they're a, they're a supplier that, that bills their customers based off of what that customer wrote on a piece of paper. And it's just, it's kind of, kind of antiquated the way it's, it's gone about. So integrating in sending and receiving good, clean API driven data, um, is, is, you know, square one. That's, that's the foundation everybody should have now. And then as far as next steps, um, I know the the LTL Digital Council that's being facilitated now by the NMFTA is working on a pre pickup visibility API, which will be pretty cool. That's kind of it pulls from that parcel side where if I'm a customer and it's you know getting close to my closing time, I want to send maybe my my shipping clerks or dock labor home. I can look and see the carriers two stops away, um, and so that that'll be pretty pretty awesome for the industry. I think hopefully a lot of carriers adopt it. Oh, I think uh, with, especially with how readily carriers have adopted API calls, I think that that's, you know, just something that will enhance that will add on really quickly. Um, I know that when I was at a 3PL, it was, uh, it was always expensive through our TMS provider to add that API with that carrier in there. Cause it was a charge, you know, per customer and per carrier for that customer. And so everyone was really hesitant because, you know, it's a significant price tag. So um, the way we actually ended up getting it approved was we took an entire month's worth of shipments for one carrier and one customer combination looked up through like their API call or like through some of their dynamic pricing that they had. And, you know, if we had this API turned on, like, like basically what we could, what pricing we could have gotten outside of our contract pricing. Um, and we were able to save on, I think just 20 shipments for that month alone, we were able to save like $13,000, which was going to cover like more than what we needed for getting this implemented. So that was kind of a creative way. Cause when you see the, the price tag and you're like, Oh, it's going to cost $20,000 to do this. Then, you know, you're kind of like, do I really need to spend $20,000 on some technology just to the improving what's already working? Um, and then, but when we went through and added that like opportunity cost, that was like the financial money that was lost. That's when we're like, okay, this is it. So, you know, if you have that hesitancy of getting those API calls involved, just look at the opportunity, like just look at all the money that you basically left on the table that you could have been saving um, by not, by doing it. Yeah, it's it's a no brainer at this point. Um, and it, it was smart to do that, you know, that analysis and cost benefit. Um, but LTL is a little sneaky. I, I, I like to say it's been fake automated for a while. You know, we've had rating, you could plug in zips and weights and classes, but that just isn't enough anymore. And in my mind, until like, you shouldn't be able to pull a rate, but then also have to go refer to a hundred page rules tariff just to make sure the rate is accurate. So all the logic in that rules tariff should be built in. We need like a 2.0 rating engine. The amount of disdain and like anger in my heart that exists for rules tariffs is almost immeasurable as someone who sat there every month and had to go through and find out just what had changed because, you know, carriers don't tell you when they update something to their rules tariff and you only know when you get a bunch of invoices that fail, which is not a great way to do that. So you're sitting there looking through all these carriers rules tariffs every month going, well, I wonder if you changed anything. And uh, sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. And that's a great use of someone's time. (laughs) That's right. Not only that, but they're just they're ugly. They're they're they look like they're out of 1962. There's no pictures. Oh, wait. and when someone makes a PDF that's not searchable, if you are an LTL carrier out there and you have a PDF on your website of your rules tariff that is not searchable, just know that you are the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, if you could go back and pick anything to redo or standardize or basically reinvent in the LTL space, what would you pick? That's a tough one. Um, my first answer is all of it. 
but no, that's, that's a little facetious. I mean, it, it's, we like to pick and, and point out things that are broken and backwards and weird, but really, I mean, it's a dang impressive industry. It's not easy, you know, to coordinate real estate and people and trucks and freight. Like it's, we all live in this digital environment where you, you click a button and buy something, you know, and that's demand. The demand signal is, is digital and just clicking a mouse, but supply is still very physical and, you know, you still have to move freight in the real world. So it, honestly, it's, it's tough. Uh, I would just say maybe, maybe the education and communication part, which is kind of what I'm attacking now. Um, it probably should have been done sooner. And there's been some solutions out there over the last couple of years, but I think a non-biased approach and, and using some basic human psychology and, and just knowing how people work and think, you know, is pretty valuable to it instead of just throw all the facts, you know, in, in like an encyclopedia um, type of type of tool. So, yeah, education. Um, and hopefully we have time for the last question here because I thought about it. Oh, don't worry. There will forever be time for the last question because um, we are almost running out of time. So don't worry. No one that comes on this show is ever going to get out of answering this question. So Curtis, is a hot dog a sandwich? Absolutely not. Because if you take it one step further in that logic, is a is a jelly donut a sandwich? No. <laughs> It's, it's got something surrounded by like two pieces of bread. Mm -hmm. uh, no, absolutely not. It's one piece of bread. It was actually, they think it came into existence like in 1901 at Coney Island, where a vendor of sausages ran out of like the wax paper. And so he just stuck it in a little French roll or a bun that he had nearby. So it was just a reactive like band-aid solution that caught on. It, it was not a chef's creation. It was not the Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> so my vote would be absolutely not. It's not a sandwich. I like the amount of research and history into the hot dog that you brought to this. That's a perspective we haven't gotten before. And um, honestly, it's, it's pretty perfect. I kind of like it. Um, I did it's, not know that it uh, came about just by like a hot dog getting shoved into a uh, French roll, which honestly, that sounds pretty good right now. Yeah, it does. It does. But it was an accident. You know, hey, sometimes the best things come from accidents. Um, if anyone wants to find you non-accidentally about outside the show, where can they find you? Um LinkedIn for me is is Central Station. Um, should be pretty easy to find on there. And then I've got um, my personal website where I have some writing and some different links to uh, pieces and, and shows I've been a part of talking about LTL. And that's curtisgarrett.co. Um, and then understandltl.com is a thing as well. That's where my course lives. So yeah, there's there's a few ways to find me, but those would be the top three. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it here first. If you want to go harass Curtis about his uh, hot dog opinions or get some of that sweet LTL knowledge, you know where to find him. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me, Mary. This was fun. Find check all the podcasts anywhere you get your podcasts, like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Don't forget to check out all the other amazing Freight Waves podcasts, such as as tracks your time and modes don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter on freightwaves.com slash check call see you on the internet